the constant messages that draw me to investigate different aspects of the world, whether it be a tree root, an upturned tree, a moon moth cocoon, my children, other people. What fascinates me is that I feel as if if I'm if I'm drawn to a certain subject matter and once I begin then all these stories arise and connections uh, with the bigger world and with history with other artists or other traditions that helps me feel like I'm in this very deep communication with the world. With the Upturned Root series, just seeing how the elements are in flux. In California, we've had droughts. I worked in Cascade Falls and the Empty Waterfall. Watching the root structures reach for the water, I, I was fascinated by them. Spent many, many, many hours drawing the roots, reaching and distorting themselves in order to reach the water. And then I moved on when there are the fires in Napa and Sonoma County to this amazing upturned tree in Kenwood that I would visit for years frequently. I was wondering if it was still there. So I went up to Kenwood and it was. So in order to digest the fires, to pay reverence to this element of fire, to bring balance, uh, to myself in the midst of fire. I decided to dedicate many, many months <laughs> to this piece. So I hired a carpenter to cut out 16 panels. I spent months preparing um, the surface with a mixture of traditional gesso, which includes marble dust, titanium, gypsum, and glue, sanding in between until I built up a really luminous ground so that the metal, the silver, the light will reflect through the panel and react with the silver. Um, what fascinates me about using the silver is that when the light hits the panels at different angles and at different times of the day, this image, which is seemingly static, um, will change. It's as, as if the forms will come out of the wall, they'll recede. Part of it will be obscured. Other parts will come to the forefront. So it fascinates me to have something that I've drawn with the interaction of light coming into what I've drawn transform the piece. I wanted them separated because it's an upturning of the elements. Um, it was quite a challenge to untangle this huge root structure. And I allowed to go with the general form, but allow my own drawing, my own hand to lead me. And as I was drawing it, I just saw the whole universe contained within this tree. Um, Leonardo da Vinci mentioned such. We're just a microcosm of the macrocosm. And I really felt that with this tree. My new painting has taken me to the exploration of moon moth cocoons. And I'm working with that in oil. And it's amazing these stories and events that happen fascinated by the, the abstract tilts of the cocoons together and the womb-like form of the cocoon. The transition of the opacity to the translucency as the cocoon moves more into a moth. The colors of the light greens and light umbers are beautiful, some violets. 
And while I was painting this, I came down one morning and I was like, how did that like glob of cinnabar green like get on that cocoon? Did it like fall from the ceiling? So I was like, how did that happen? So I sat down and I took my brush to gently take it off and I, I sensed movement, I saw movement. I'm like, oh my God, there's a little green moth that was exactly matching the paint color stuck on the painting. So I gently tried to remove it. The little wing got stuck, so it detached. And I put it in a little fern, said prayers for it. It was very sad. Um, my thoughts were, was it trying to return to the cocoon? Did it emerge from the cocoon? Was there enough light held in my paints that it was attracted to the light? This painting is showing me the transition from death to life, uh, the metamorphosis that happens in nature, the, the impermanence, the transience. It's all very fascinating. It's as if these stories, these happenings that arise while I'm in my creative process help me understand this journey that I'm on and how fascinating it is to just observe, to see what arises, to realign, to pause, and to continue on this journey to see, you know, what, what, what is really essential in my art making practice and its relation to the environment, to the world around me, the messages, the conversations that arise that are deeper than mere language, and to pay attention so that I don't miss these beautiful moments in my surroundings with others and with the world. Thank you all for taking your time to look at my work.